Hey, thank you for watching. I'm Terry Savelle Foy, and I want to talk to you today about your dreams, about your goals, about what you're going to do with the rest of your life. You know, do you have a dream, a goal for your life, but maybe you're talking yourself out of it because you're doubting your ability to hear from God, you're worried that, you know, if you step out, you might miss God or you might fail. In fact, I want to share with you 10 signs that you may have a fear of failing, a fear of stepping out and see if you identify with any of them. But first of all, let me just say the number one enemy of your success is fear. Fear is a weapon Satan uses to get you to stop dreaming, to stop believing for the promises of God in your life. And you know, that word fear actually means flight or to run away from. So think about that personally. What are you running from in your life because of fear? Are you running from the call of God on your life? Are you running from a new business? Maybe a new idea that you know God gave you, but you're afraid that if you pursue this thing, it might fail. What are you running from? Is it insecurities, doubts, inferiorities, a lack of money? What is it that's causing you to shrink back in fear and miss out on what God may have for your life? You know, I think the saddest day would be to get to heaven and God give you a glimpse of all that you could have had, all that you could have done, and all that you could have done. You allowed fear to stop you. That would be a miserable moment to think I could have done all that, but I allowed Satan to talk me out of it. You know, Henry Ford said, one of the greatest discoveries a man makes, one of his great surprises is to find he can do what he was afraid he couldn't do. You know, I love what Isaiah says in the book of Isaiah. It says, do not remember the former things, nor even consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing and now it shall spring forth. See, God wants to do a new thing in your life, but he can't do it if you keep holding on to the old things, if you keep allowing fear to stop you from those new things. So I was reading in Psychology Today 10 signs that you may have a fear of failure. Now see if you identify with any of these that could be preventing you from stepping out. Number one is you worry about what other people think about you. You know, what will people say if I tell them I feel like I'm called to preach? I feel like I'm called to run the company. What will people say? What will my family think? Because they know my mistakes. They know my past. Are they going to laugh at me if I tell them I feel like God's calling me into a ministry? Number two, you worry about your ability to pursue the future you desire. You know, I think we all go through that. We feel like we're not qualified enough. We don't have all the abilities that God needs, you know, to do whatever he's called you to do. Even Moses, you remember how he said to God, Moses, and he said to the Lord, I can't talk. I stutter. So that could be a sign that you have a fear of failing. Number three, you worry that people will lose interest in you. You know, in relationships and business relationships, what do I have to offer? You start looking at all of your inabilities, all of your insecurities, Number four, you worry about how smart or capable you are. Keep in mind, God matches your capabilities with your calling. There is a connection between your passion, your purpose, and your potential. They're all connected. Number, four, number five, you worry about disappointing people whose opinions you value. You know, I've said on previous broadcasts that one day you're going to stand before God and give an account for your life, not somebody else's life. So you have to stop worrying about what other people think and get determined that you're going to fulfill your destiny. Number six, you tend to tell people beforehand that you don't expect to succeed in order to lower their expectations. But you know, you're actually setting yourself up for failure when you do that. The Bible actually says, be it unto you according to your faith. So when you go around telling people, well, I don't expect much then that's exactly what you're going to get. Not much. Number seven, these are all signs that you may have a fear of failing or a fear of stepping out. Once you fail at something, you have trouble imagining what you could have done differently to succeed. You know, because you failed before does not mean that you're a failure. Remember the scripture I started with? It says, do not remember the former things, nor even consider the things of old. Why? Because God wants to do a new thing and now it shall spring forth. So you have to stop remembering the old things. Number eight, you often get last minute headaches, stomach aches, or other physical symptoms that prevent you from completing your preparation. Do you know that worry and stress actually affect your body? 
It can show up in physical signs. In fact, there's a scripture that says, in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Why do I have that scripture memorized? Because <laughs> I have fought anxiety. But think about saying that whenever anxiety tries to invade your soul. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Number nine, you often get distracted by tasks that prevent you from completing your preparation that in hindsight weren't as urgent as they seemed at the time. In other words, you look for distractions so you have an excuse as to why you failed. Number 10, the final sign that you that reveal you may have a fear of failing. You tend to procrastinate and run out of time to complete your preparation adequately. Let me just remind you, procrastination is a dream thief. Satan hopes you keep putting it off and putting it off, have that tomorrow mentality, or someday, I'm going to get serious about this, someday I'm going to pursue this thing. Keep in mind, someday is not a day of the week. It doesn't go someday, Monday, Tuesday. You just have to get determined. You're going to overcome this fear of failure, this fear of stepping out, and start making strides towards the plan of God for your life. You know, you can literally talk yourself out of the will of God. And let me just tell you one sign that you may not be fully obeying what God's telling you to do. One sign is a lack of peace. Or you could say confusion when you just can't find peace somewhere. It could be that you're not fully obeying something that God's telling you to do. You know, years ago, the Lord kept telling me, you know, I was practicing journaling my time with the Lord, and I'd sit there quietly, and I'd listen for the Lord, write down what came up in my spirit, and I kept hearing, let go of the past. So I'd write that down, let go of the past. Months would go by, and I'd be sitting there, and I'd hear, let go of the past. I'd write that down. I'd think, I'm trying. Well, then one day I heard, give the past a burial. It was like the Lord was saying the same thing, but in different ways over and over and over. And, you know, I would look at other people and think they're just moving on with their life. They're pursuing their dreams. Why am I still here struggling with this? Then I came across this statement. It said, God will not advance his instructions on your life beyond your last act of disobedience. Now, let me repeat that. God will not advance his instructions for your life beyond your last act of disobedience. In other words, if God's trying to get you to do something, if you don't fully obey what God's telling you to do, he'll just keep bringing you back to it, bringing you back to it until you finally do what he's telling you to do. Like you just look at the story of Jonah in the Bible. Remember how Jonah got swallowed up by the well? Well, before that happened, God told Jonah, he said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Well, apparently Jonah went the complete opposite direction to a town called Tarshish, which is kind of hard for me to say, (laughs) but he went the opposite direction. Apparently, from what I've been told, that's no different than God saying, go west, and he went east. Well, because he disobeyed God, he got swallowed up by a mess of problems, confusion, chaos, torment, misery. Finally, in the belly of that well, you know, he cries out to God. The well spits him out. And what did God say to Jonah? Jonah, go to Nineveh. In other words, his instructions for his life did not change. Now, Jonah wasted a lot of time, unnecessary torment, chaos in his life, all because he did not do what God said to do. So God just waited for him to, you know, cry out. And then he just told him the same thing. Jonah, go to Nineveh. Well, the same thing in our lives. If God's trying to get you to do something, if you don't fully obey what he's saying, He'll keep bringing you back to it until you do it. But we stay miserable when we're in disobedience to God. One of the things that that God does is, you know, the Holy Spirit withdraws our peace. That's why it's an indication you may not be obeying God. You just can't seem to find peace. Well, another thing is you can start doubting your ability to hear from God. And, you know, that's easy to do because most of the time God doesn't show up physically and actually tell you what he wants you to do. You have to know it in your spirit. You hear it. Well, a lot of times when we're trying to step out into a new thing God has, go to the next level, whatever that means to you, you start doubting your ability to hear from God. And the reason why is because it's hard. It's difficult. It's challenging. It's not what your flesh wants to do. It stretches you out of your comfort zone. In other words, it's uncomfortable going to that next level, doing the next thing God has for you. It's not comfortable. And none of us like like to be, you know, stretched out of our comfort zone. But 
we start saying things like, God, I just need like seven more signs of confirmation that, that I've heard from you. I heard Joel Osteen say, you know, God, if Moses shows up at my front doorstep, then I'll believe I heard from you. Or if I see a camel walking down the freeway, <laughs> I'll believe I've heard from you. If I just see some birds in the sign of a cross, I believe that this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. So we just start doubting our ability to hear from God, or we wait for God to maybe change our mind, change his mind, change other people. But really, we're just waiting for an answer that won't be uncomfortable. Well, if you're uncomfortable, great. That means you're growing, you're stretching. And I just want to challenge you to get rid of the misery do what you need to do. A wise person does right now what they're going to be happy with later on. An unwise person, a foolish person, does whatever feels good right now, but almost always regrets it later on. And like Joyce Meyer says, later on always comes. You know, when I was a little girl, my dad taught me and my sister, whenever he was telling us to do something, do our chores or whatever, he would always say, girls, obey quickly and quietly. Those two commands, obey quickly and obey quietly. Well, there's meaning behind that because when you obey quietly, that means you stop complaining. You're not mumbling about it. You're not throwing a big fit. You just do it. And then obeying quickly. You know, I think about my daughter Cassidy. Every time we, you know, have our laundry ready, I take it to the bottom of the stairs and then Cassidy's supposed to take it up to her room and put it all away. Well, I'll set it at the stairs, you know, and then I'll tell her when she gets home from school or when I get home from work, I'll say, Cash, you need to do your chores. And she'll say, okay. Now, if four days later the clothes are still setting on the stairs, then she's not really obeyed what I told her to do. And see, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Or let's say she takes half the clothes, which sometimes that happens. She'll take half the clothes up and then she'll get distracted or she'll do homework. She'll say, Mom, I'll do the rest tomorrow. Is that okay? Partial obedience is still disobedience. And it's the same with God. When we just do a little bit of what God's telling us to do, we're still in disobedience. And here's why this is so serious. Disobedience opens the door for a curse. In fact, I've heard Joyce Meyer say, this Bible has one message in it, told thousands of different ways, but it has one message. Do what I tell you to do, you'll be blessed. Don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to live under a curse. One message, and I don't really care for that second part, but it's the truth nonetheless. Do what I tell you to do, you'll be blessed. Don't do it, you're going to live under a curse. So whatever God is telling you to do, just determine in your heart, I'm going to do it. As hard as it is, as uncomfortable as it makes me feel, I am going to do what God's telling me to do. So remind yourself too, whatever God's telling you to do, it's for your benefit. He always rewards obedience, always. You know, if you understand everything, you have everything prepared, the plans are laid out, you have all the money, you have all the time, that doesn't really require faith, does it? See, God is moved by your faith. You think about Jehoshaphat, when armies were coming against him and it looked impossible. He just said, God, I don't know what to do. Even if I did, I don't have the strength to do this. But he said, God, my eyes are on you. And he began to seek God and God gave him a victory. Or you think about the blind man when he came to Jesus, you know, to get his sight. And it says that Jesus actually took mud, rubbed it together and put it in the blind man's eyes. Then he told him, he said, go down to the pool of Siloam and wash it off. Now that blind man could have said, that's kind of crazy. Why can't you just say be healed like you've done before? He, he could have questioned it and could have said, you want me to look like a fool? First of all, I'm blind. You want me to walk all the way down there? I can't even see where I'm going with mud smashed in my face, looking ridiculous. But you know what? He didn't question God. Even though it was awkward, it was uncomfortable. He did what Jesus said to do, washed his eyes, and he got his sight. I love what Joel Osteen says. Sometimes you have to turn your mind off and listen to your heart. Faith isn't in your head. Faith is in your heart. But when you obey God, dreams come to pass. So whatever God's telling you to do, I want you to do it. Now, when we come back, I'm going to share with you five ways you fight fear with a plan. I'll be right back. Life is busy. Work, family, school, and so many other things demand your time and energy. 
And in the middle of all this, you have dreams and desires you want to accomplish. No matter what you want to do, lose weight, get out of debt, or grow closer to God, Terry Savelle Foy wants to help you. That's why she has prepared a special bundle of hope-filled resources to move you past where you are and into where you want to be. Fight for your dreams, fear not, there is nothing to fear, and dig in your heels. I want to talk to you about how to fight for your dreams. You know, you have to fight for whatever it is you're believing God for in your life. You know, maybe you have a dream in your heart. You have no idea how it's going to happen, but you're unwilling to give up on it. As you listen to these messages, thoughts of fear and intimidation about your future will stop as your faith grows in God's amazing plans for you. You have a God-given dream and a purpose to fulfill. Don't go another day being held back. Get the tools you need today to see those dreams come true. Don't wait another moment. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org right now to request your copy of these powerful resources for only $25. You can also instantly download individual MP3 versions at our online store. I want you to get this special package because I believe it is divinely inspired to teach you how to go after your dreams and to not give up, not quit somewhere halfway in between, between what God really has for your life and then what's just comfortable. Now, God wants you to go all the way, but you know, this message, fear not, I only know how to preach from experience and I have battled with fear and we all do. That's the number one thing that comes against you when you have a dream from God. But God's the one who said, Fear not, there's nothing to fear. Play this over and over and over. In fact, I list my favorite scriptures that battle fear, that will give you confidence like never before to stand up, look fear in the face and say, I'm going to do this. I don't care what the devil says. I'm going to do this. The other one is on fight for your dreams. A dream comes about with much business and painful effort. I heard someone say warfare always surrounds the birth of a miracle. So if you're feeling resistance and frustration right now, don't worry about it. You probably have a dream from God. You just got to fight for it and then dig in your heels. You know, I was reading right here on the back. It says this message of determination is designed to strengthen your resolve when you feel like quitting or giving up on reaching your goals. No matter what it is, if it's a goal of losing weight, getting debt free, growing in your relationship with God, writing your first book, Every dream is challenged with resistance, but this will give you the how-to, how to keep going, what to do while you're waiting for that dream. So get this special package. I know it's going to help you. So I'm sharing with you five ways you fight fear with a plan. Plan number one is build your confidence. In what? In God's love for you. Now you might say, Terry, we all know that, but I'm telling you, this is the foundation. You have to build your confidence in the fact that God loves you, period. When you absolutely get convinced that God's love is for you, that it's real, that it's unconditional, it's not based on all the conditions of you being perfect, that is what gives you the confidence to go after these impossible dreams. You know, you might have heard that your whole life, but you have to get that revelation and realize that God's not mad at you, that he forgives you the first time you ask him. You know, your past isn't keeping you from God's best. It's your remembrance of your past. So you have to let it go and realize God loves you more than anything in this world. He loves you. You know, I was thinking about my daughter, Cassidy, when she was a little girl and she was in a jogging stroller, I would take her out walking in the neighborhood every night. I'd get off work, I'd get the jogging stroller and take her for a walk. Well, so many times, you know, she'd just be sitting there and she'd look up in the sky and see this airplane. Well, from her perspective, way up in the sky, this airplane looked like it was like that big. And sometimes she would say, and I thought it was so cute, she'd say, Mommy, are there little bitty people in that plane? <laughs> I thought that was so cute because from where we were, that plane looked like it's about, you know, a couple inches long. Well, I just imagine if that plane were to park right in front of Cassidy, she would see just how big that plane is and how big the people were. Well, it's just the truth. The closer you get to something, the bigger it becomes. The further you get from something, the smaller it becomes. What's well, the same with God? The further you get from God in your life, the smaller he becomes. 
the closer you get to God, the more intimate you get with God, the bigger he becomes to you. And you begin to realize, I don't have to be afraid. God seriously loves me. And you know, he's on my side. I don't have to fear this thing. So build your confidence in God's love for you. Number two, to fight your fears with a plan. Build your faith. Faith is what activates God's power in your life. Fear activates Satan's power. You know, you can't be full of fear and full of faith at the same time. You've got to get rid of all these fears. And you know, for anything to stay alive, it has to be fed. So if I like had a stray dog come to my house and I put a little bowl of food out there, he's going to keep coming. If I keep feeding him, he's going to keep coming. Well, you could be feeding your fears by talking about them, reliving things, sharing them with other people. I'm scared this will never happen. I really don't think it's going to work. You know, all of those doubts, and all those, you're feeding them when you keep talking about them. So you have to eliminate those fears, starve what you want to die in your life, and feed what you want to live. Starve your fears, feed your faith. How do you feed your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why we offer resources like this. So you can get full of faith. And that way, when Satan comes at you, you're so full of faith, you're not even intimidated. You just say, I just believe God can do it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I trust God. That's a result of faith comes by hearing. Number three is build your knowledge of the word of God. Build your knowledge of the Word of God. You know, what you don't know can hurt you. In fact, Hosea says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So when you start building your knowledge of the Word, you develop another level of confidence. You know, if you were to just even take five minutes and set a 21-day goal that for five minutes every day on my lunch hour or before I go to bed, five minutes I'm going to read the Word. And get a translation that you understand. I love the message translation. Get something that makes sense to you. And just read a portion. Don't say my goal is to read five chapters and then you don't have a clue what you read. But at least you can check it off and say I read it. No, the purpose is to get the word in you because it builds your knowledge and knowledge is power. It builds your confidence. You know, the Bible talks about how the entrance of God's word brings light. Well, what happens when a light goes on? you begin to see things you didn't see when you were in the dark. That's what happens when you get full of the Word of God. You begin to see things you never saw before. You begin to realize that, you know, like Isaiah says, Fear not, there's nothing to fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now that scripture alone will give you confidence. So, Number four is build yourself up in the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have that gift. You know, the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being a gift. If you have that gift, utilize it. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will bring comfort, strength, guidance, help, counsel. So when you're praying in the Spirit, it's never wasted time. And finally, number five, build up your courage. How? Speak courage over yourself. You know, in this lesson, I've shared some of my favorite scriptures that I like to speak over myself. One of them being, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Your grace is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect in weakness. I want you to get these scriptures down in your spirit because every time you speak them out, you believe them in a stronger way. So I want you to take these five steps, apply them to your life, get the messages so you can hear them over and over and over. So you build up that courage to step out and do what God's called you to do. Never doubt it again. Never worry if I heard from God. No, get that confidence that I know I've heard from God and I'm not backing down until I see this dream fulfilled. You can do it. And thank you so much for watching us. We love you. We pray for you and we thank you. Life is busy. Work, family, school, and so many other things demand your time and energy. And in the middle of all this, you have dreams and desires you want to accomplish. No matter what you want to do, lose weight, get out of debt, or grow closer to God, Terry Savelle Foy wants to help you. That's why she has prepared a special bundle of hope-filled resources to move you past where you are and into where you want to be. Fight for your dreams. 
Fear not, there is nothing to fear, and dig in your heels. I want to talk to you about how to fight for your dreams. You know, you have to fight for whatever it is you're believing God for in your life. You know, maybe you have a dream in your heart. You have no idea how it's going to happen, but you're unwilling to give up on it. As you listen to these messages, thoughts of fear and intimidation about your future will stop as your faith grows in God's amazing plans for you. You have a God-given dream and a purpose to fulfill. Don't go another day being held back. Get the tools you need today to see those dreams come true. Don't wait another moment. Call or visit jerrysavelle.org right now to request your copy of these powerful resources for only $25. You can also instantly download individual MP3 versions at our online store. One of the greatest frustrations in life can be dealing with money, paying the bills, feeding the kids, and dealing with debt. Too many people feel trapped and stuck financially. But God wants you to prosper and live blessed. Jerry Savelle has poured spiritual insight and experience regarding freedom from financial bondage into the pages of his new book, Why God Wants You to Prosper. I want to encourage you to order your copy today. It represents over 45 years of studying the Bible and living the Bible and experiencing Bible results. It'll teach you not only that it is God's will for you to prosper, but why He wants you to prosper. Call or click right now to request your copy of Jerry Savelle's new book, Why God Wants You to Prosper, for just $16. For convenient online ordering and ebook option, visit our online store at jerrysavelle.org. Years ago, the Lord instructed Jerry Savelle to make an impact on the kingdom of God in Africa. As a friend and partner of Jerry Savelle Ministries, you've provided vital Bible school training to over 5,000 pastors and ministry leaders over the last 10 years. The hope and truth found in God's Word is needed now more than ever. Thank you for your faithful support of our worldwide outreaches. You're making a difference. Every week, Jerry Savelle Ministries International is making a powerful difference in the lives of people around the world. But that's only possible because of the financial support of friends like you. That's why we'd like to invite you to join us as we continue to take the power of God's Word to a global audience in such great need. So call the number on your screen to discover more about Jerry Savelle Ministries today. Both Jerry and his daughter, Terry Savelle Foy, invite you to explore our other ministry resources on the web at jerrysavelle.org. Join us again next week as you continue your journey to discovering God's blessing in your life, where God can transform your circumstances and you can discover your destiny.